thank you so much for uh, coming in for this talk. I'm super excited to be presenting uh, on the topic of supercharging your Kubernetes AI deployments with the help of WebAssembly. Um, my co-presenter unfortunately couldn't make it because of visa issues. So uh, I have recorded a, a few of his um, slides and the demo that he'll be running. So please, uh, I hope that uh, you're able to learn something uh, today from this talk. A uh, quick introduction about myself. I'm Shivai. I'm a developer advocate uh, at MiniSearch. It's a Rust-based search engine and also a contributor at Layer 5, which is a service mesh uh, community. And uh, Rishat, who is my co-presenter who couldn't make it, is an incoming uh, student at University of Toronto. Uh, and yeah, so of course, the first thing right at the bat I'd like to cover is what exactly is WebAssembly, right? Now, one of the most common misconceptions for those who might have heard the terminology or might also have had some experience uh, working with or having heard about it in the news or in open source is that um, people often relate it to web since it's like in the word contains web. So people usually attribute it to just being limited to web browsers or web applications or JavaScript. And they also like to compare it with assembly language, but uh, it is neither web nor assembly. Uh, it did start as a browser technology back in uh, 2017, uh, but of course it has now more usage outside of the browser, especially for cloud native use cases. And we'll also see today how you can use that with the help of Kubernetes as well in order to deploy your applications. And uh, of course the main idea of what WebAssembly is that it is a binary instruction format. So um, it does look very similar to how an assembly language uh, program would work. That means that it runs natively uh, and the structure, if you were to see how a dot wasm file, uh, you will see that it's very similar to how an assembly language uh, is, but of course it's much more different than how assembly language works. And it's primarily used as a compilation target. So um, you can consider WebAssembly not as a primitive technology, but as a compilation target where you would basically take a program, a function written in any popular programming language like Rust, C++, and then compile it down to the WebAssembly bytecode. And your WebAssembly bytecode is what is interacting with the host environment. And uh, since, uh, like, you know, it's a polyglot environment essentially. So that means that whether you use functional programming languages or you may use scripting programming languages like Python, JavaScript, or even your proper uh, object oriented programming lang languages like C or Java, those can be compiled into WebAssembly. So, um, whether you're coming from a web background or you're coming from a DevOps background, um, from a Golang background, you'll find uh, the ability to actually convert your functions that might have been written in these languages into the WebAssembly bytecode. And uh, that helps us to bring some of the main key features about WebAssembly. So the first one is that it is super efficient and fast. Um, the biggest reason for this is that uh, your WebAssembly bytecodes are super small and this allows you to run them very efficiently. And uh, this is one of the biggest use cases that we'll also see when we are comparing it uh, against, let's say, your standard Docker images or containers in general. Uh, the other one is that it's open and debuggable. So of course, uh, the uh, entire web assembly uh, scenario is it's completely open sourced. So the web assembly uh, is powered by the bytecode alliance. It's the alliance that is kind of the governing body for web assembly. So it's completely open sourced and all the protocols uh, that are surrounding web assembly are regularly discussed at uh, the bytecode alliance meetings. And of course, the biggest one is that, uh, that we'll also cover today is that it's also working for non web platforms, uh, specifically in cloud native ecosystem. And one of the latest, uh, Surveys that was conducted by the CNCF right before Cube, uh, KubeCon North America, and they announced these results at KubeCon North America was that uh, the usage of uh, WebAssembly today in server-side applications and cloud applications is actually two to three times more than in uh, web applications. Uh, so standard web applications that you might see for the web platforms is uh, using WebAssembly bytecodes uh, inside of your JavaScript applications. And some of the most common uh, applications that you might see them being run is like Figma, Adobe, uh, Lightshot. So these are applications that are running on the browser and they use WebAssembly to be able to run more uh, computationally intensive tasks that regular JavaScript might not be able to. So you uh, run, uh, for example, Figma uses uh, mscript in uh, to convert your C++ uh, codes into WebAssembly bytecodes and then run them alongside JavaScript 
to power Figma. And uh, it is also safe. So WebAssembly comes with a, a security model. So it's kind of a sandbox model that uh, keeps it super safe. Now, one of the drawbacks that we'll see with WebAssembly is that in itself, as a bytecode, it cannot do anything on its own. So if you were to uh, make it interact with, let's say, your system files or your file system, you'll need other dependencies uh, to be able to actually manage that. And we'll see how uh, that is done uh, in the later part of this presentation. So what we have uh, seen so far is that WebAssembly is a really fast and efficient way to be able to run applications, right? And this is also a great benefit that uh, you just have one bytecode and this bytecode can run across multiple platforms. So it, it is not platform dependent. Usually whenever you are writing any program, uh, you might have to install certain dependencies that might be limited to one specific environment. But with, uh, with WebAssembly, uh, you can run this across different system architectures and not have to worry about whether it's an x64 architecture or some other architecture as well. And again, it's safe and portable. Um, and then primarily, when we talk about the ability for the WebAssembly bytecodes uh, or essentially the entire ecosystem to be able to interact with your file systems, that is where uh, we are going to be uh, talking about the binary compatibility and also what we uh, are going to introduce, which is WASI, which is the WebAssembly system interface. So this is the technology that enables you to uh, let interact uh, your WebAssembly bytecode or your modules with, let's say, system resources and network resources. And um, here I'll basically now forward uh, to the uh, presentation recorded by my uh, co-presenter. And I'll just play the video. So WebAssembly systems interface or short for WASI can play a great role in using WASM outside the web. And this is a very popular tweet. You might have seen it a lot. Uh, uh, so this is by the founder of Docker. And he said if WASM plus WASI existed in 2008, uh, we wouldn't have needed to create Docker. That's how important it is. Uh, uh, so, so this is uh, just uh, uh, just very really interesting tweet about Wazi and how important Wazi is. So uh, I, I want to uh, start talking about Wazi by talking about system interfaces. And um, uh, so this is um, so just saying the statement C gives you direct access to system resources, which is most certainly false because it's far too important for stability and security. So what happens is. Um, uh, and this is also a pretty popular diagram, is that uh, applications go to the kernel uh, to do all kinds of system calls, maybe something to read a file, delete a file, all kinds of system calls. Uh, the applications ask the kernel, can I do the system call? And the kernel then facilitates the system calls for the applications. And these would probably be in some standards like POSIX or uh, uh, some way to do it. All applications or programming languages have different ways of doing system calls. Uh, you do system calls a different way in C than in Python or Java. So uh, yeah, all applications have a different way of doing the system calls. And uh, but these essentially just ask the kernel, uh, and um, the kernel then uh, uh, thinks about doing this these system calls. Uh, and and this solves the problem we were talking about. Uh, allowing users to do, users and applications to do what they have the right to do without uh, uh, without stopping other applications. Uh, and this and this part solves it pretty easily. Uh, what WASI does is um, C or Rust might have very different ways of doing the system calls or very different standards as well. So what WASI does is it gives you uh, programming language independent methods. So oh, using WASI, you would, uh, let's say, want to, uh, if you would want to, let's say, do do a system call in C and Rust, you would just use WASI instead of a CR Rust's native way of doing system calls. And uh, this becomes pretty helpful because now you can, when you compile this down to WebAssembly, you can run this WebAssembly wherever you want. Uh, on our, whatever WASM runtime you use, uh, you can run this WebAssembly even on the server. Um, so this becomes pretty important when you are trying to run WASM outside the web uh, because you are not now tied to particular kind of system calls and you just use WASI whenever you want to make a system call. So uh, uh, WASI just gives you uh, independent uh, methods to do these system calls. So that's what WASI does us, uh, and it's pretty helpful 
to run voice from outside the web. So the demo we'll be seeing will actually be using WASI as well. Uh, yeah, because we want to run Wasm on the server side. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah in those cases, Wasi is pretty helpful. Uh, so that's what we'll be seeing uh, in the demos as well. And uh, finally, to end with, uh, these are just some benchmarks I had done for running uh, a machine learning model um, uh, on, on a Linux container uh, using TensorFlow Python uh, and the same TensorFlow Python, but in a Wasm container, uh, in the Node.js wasm runtime, I have like a bunch of uh, different benchmarks over here. Uh, and I also have the code for this up on my GitHub. But I've done these benchmarks and um, uh, I, I, what I particularly want you to see is the TensorFlow Python in the Linux container uh, and the wasm uh, part. So we are using the wasm time uh, runtime, uh, which is a very popular wasm runtime. and. Um, uh, I'm running the exact same machine learning model uh, in all of these. So I wanted to see the Wasm with AOT compilation, which shows some pretty interesting results. Um, it's pretty fast. Uh, uh, it's pretty faster than what a Linux container would uh, take to do this. And um, uh, yeah, these are just some benchmarks. Feel free to explore more or look through the code uh, for producing these benchmarks. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty interesting benchmark uh, to see the use of WASM and particularly AOT compilation. Um, so, so AOT compilation also plays a great. So um, I hope, by the way, everyone is able to hear properly. Okay, perfect. Uh, so what uh, we kind of saw was that uh, from this particular demonstration that uh, for running a simple inference using one of the most popular machine learning models, which is MobileNet, uh, with the help of WASM, it was a two to uh, two point five times faster than your standard uh, container image that uh, we ran with with Python uh, inside of a Linux container. So these kind of showcases the excellent approach when it comes to being able to do more highly computational tasks with the help of WebAssembly. Uh, of course, this was just one example. Um, but now we'll be moving on to the demos. And uh, within the demos, um, and within the demos, uh, what we'll do is that we'll focus on and we'll show you that how you can basically create a uh, WebAssembly based uh, APIs and microservices, and then uh, deploy them on side of your Kubernetes clusters uh, on uh, running them as Kubernetes nodes. So, and the example that we're going to be showing you is that um, inside of this specific example that we'll run, uh, and again, we'll show you in the, this dem dem demonstration as well, that we'll have a few pools of Linux containers. So there'll be nodes that are running your standard Linux containers, and there'll be nodes that will run your WebAssembly uh, container as well. And then how you can uh, interrupt operate between them and make system calls between uh, them as well. So first I'll just set the context for the demo that we're going to be showing. So now we'll set up some context for the demo. And this is what we'll show our demo on. Could you run Wasm workloads on Kubernetes? So what we'll be using is either spin or slide. Uh, uh, so spin and slide are ways to just uh, run Wasm, uh, just run on uh, host Wasm apps very easily on the server side. And what we we'll also use is the container D Wasm shim. So the container D Wasm shim is pretty helpful in kind of giving you a bridge between Kubernetes and uh, container D. It uses run Wasm as a library and um, allows you and makes it very easy to run uh, Wasm apps. Uh, so think think of it as just another shim layer you would want to add. And uh, uh, talking about this, like yeah, if if you see how the overall uh, thing looks like right now. Uh, you have kubelet uh, and the container D uh, and run was e can be managed uh, using uh, a CRI plugin as well, which is what we probably want to do. And then we have the container D wasm shim, um, well, which will talk to the container runtime engine uh, container D. So this is how our uh, setup for running wasm workloads in Kubernetes would uh, essentially look like. And um, this is what you would ideally want to do on a single worker node. Uh, assuming this worker node is just running like awesome applications, uh, this is essentially what you would want to do. Uh, so yeah, yeah this is a uh, uh, overview of the demo we'll be showing. And uh, what we'll do is uh, uh, um, we'll, we first want to start by making a runtime class. Uh, essentially, uh, make a runtime class so it knows uh, that whenever I have a slide application or a spin application, 
I, I need to use an untimed loss. Uh, and you can also do this for spin, of course. Uh, it's pretty uh, easily supportable for both. What you would also have, and then what you do is whenever you make a deployment, um, uh, whenever you make a, a deployment, you uh, add your slide or spin container applications and just tell it to use the wasm slide uh, uh, type class. And uh, with that, uh, your workload will run on, uh, and with that, your web assemblies will be run. Uh, and, and being managed uh, in a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, uh, yeah, so that was the overview of this. And uh, if you kind of took something back from this, uh, then you'd know that I'm trying to have Linux and Wasm containers side by side. I'm not trying to replace either. Uh, so I, I ideally what I'd have, and what, this is what I'll be showing in the demo as well. I'll have a Linux node pool, I'll have a Wasi node pool. And I'll have both of these side by side, some of my requests uh, are probably compute intensive requests being handwritten by the WASI node pool uh, and um, um, the rest of the things being done by the Linux node pool. So I'm not saying that you should have WASM replace Linux containers altogether, but just have them run side by side. So with that, let's go to the demo. So, uh, so now we'll set up so uh, basically what you saw was that uh, what we are trying to intend is that we are not trying to replace the Docker containers with your WebAssembly containers, but instead uh, be, being able to run them side by side so that your Docker container can actually, because of the extensive ecosystem that and the tool chains that come inbuilt with Docker, uh, those can be managed with the help of your Docker containers. Whereas uh, the high computational tasks, those specific tasks can be managed with the help of your, uh, uh, with the help of the WebAssembly container. And the demo that we are going to be showing is with the help of Microsoft Azure. And uh, I'll quickly walk through, uh, through over the demo and then, uh, of course, I'll be open to questions as well later on. Now I'll be showing the demos and what we want to do in the demo is uh, take a WASM map and run it uh, and manage it with Kubernetes. Uh, so that, that's what I'll be showing in the demo. And this will be very similar to what we had been talking about. Uh, so what I have over here is a single Kubernetes cluster and uh, right now just look at the system nodes I have. So I have three system nodes which is pretty standard and right now just look at that. Uh, those are the system nodes I have and um, I, I want to run my WASM map in this Kubernetes cluster. I already have this Kubernetes cluster created on Azure but you can use literally anything you want. Okay, so with that what I want to do is uh, come to uh, uh, come to making a WebAssembly image and what we try is just making a sample WASM image and uh, we use something called Slide and Slide just allows you to uh, e easily run your WASM apps, host your WASM apps and uh, uh, it actually runs uh, uh, and it actually uses run WASI as a library. Uh, run WASI allows you to very easily uh, use the capabilities of WASI. So uh, that is what we'll be doing and uh, to do this I, I have a Rust application which is a very simple Rust application just uh, prints out hello uh, on a uh, uh, when you make an HTTP call to it and that's what we'll be looking at uh, just something simple but showing the HTTP capabilities making a request handling the request with WASM uh, that, that's what we are actually interested about. So we we'll start doing that by uh, uh, by by adding the wasm32 minus wasi target. I already have the wasm32 minus wasi target added, uh, but you might have to uh, install the wasm32 minus wasi target. So uh, uh, now that I've uh, had the wasm32 minus wasi target, I'll just go ahead and build this. So if you if you actually see what we are building, uh, we are building a slight image. Um, uh, so slight is short for spin lightning, and if you don't know, uh, as I was just talking about, it helps you, uh, it helps you run your WASM apps very easy. Uh, so, uh, and we we'll also want to make a container out of this. So we have the Docker file, but we'll come to that later. Uh, right now our application is just a single, uh, just a single file. And let's just go to the ha handle hello function. And this is returns back hello with a, um, uh, with a response, uh, with a status of 200, exactly what we want. Uh, that's all this uh, piece of code does. So uh, yeah, uh, that's what we'll be now uh, building. So I'll just do cargo build. Add the target as wasm32 minus wasi, so it knows we 
have to build it for Watson. The build was very fast, and that's because I had already built it, so you don't waste time in that. Let's go to the target folder, Watson 32 minus Watson debug, and we have a slide dot Watson file, and uh, this is the Watson file that we want to run. Uh, this is what we have compiled. Uh, when you convert this uh, into a container using the uh, Docker uh, using the Docker file we have over here, so uh, this will just allow us to convert our uh, wasm file uh, convert our dot wasm. Uh, here it is the dot wasm. Uh, this will allow us to convert this into a container image, and then we want to use a container image and run this application. So next up, uh, that's what we'll be seeing. I'm not talking a lot about slide. Uh, but uh, it is actually pretty straightforward, makes it very easy for you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if you want to know more about Slide, uh, I'll probably give the official documentation a try. And um, I'll not talk a lot about Slide over here. Uh, what I also wanted to show is uh, uh, there are some examples on Spin as well. Uh, so, oh, by the way, this uh, example on uh, using Slide is taken from uh, the official Slide examples. So yeah, just building an application and then running it with uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so, uh, but there are also, but you can also use Spin, and I'll soon talk about how you can use Spin uh, in your Kubernetes clusters uh, to run web assemblies. But um, uh, yeah, you can also use Spin very easily. And um, uh, so now that we have a Wasm uh, file, what we'll do is go to the Kubernetes cluster and try running it. Okay. So I'll have my terminal now, and um, so what I'll start by doing is uh, I, I have my editor and terminal up here. I, I'm running all of this on Azure again. You can run it wherever you want, and uh, run whatever webassembly you want. I'm just running the example I just showed. Okay. So first of what I'll do is I'll add a, uh, I'll add a node pool. Uh, so what this node pool does is. Um, it's a wasi node pool, so we are essentially playing the Kubernetes cluster that this uh, this node runs on. Uh, uh, this node runs on. Uh, this node should be running wasm wasi. Uh, so that's what I'll be doing. I've already created this node pool. It takes quite some time. So I've already created this node pool for you. And if you see, this is where I have the node pool. Uh, I have in all four nodes. Three of them are the. Um, uh, system nodes, and one of them is the my wasi pool, which I have. So uh, yes, I already have the nodes, and if I uh, actually just do, uh, uh, if, if I just do, just try to see, the now I'll be showing the demos, and what we want to do in the demo is, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, okay. So first, uh, this node runs in all four nodes, three of so that's what I'll be doing. I've already created this node pool. It takes quite some time. So I've already created this node pool for you. And if you see, this is where I have the node pool. Uh, I have in all four nodes. Three of them are the um, uh, system nodes. And one of them is the my wasi pool, which I have. So uh, yes, I already have the nodes. And if I uh, actually just do... Uh, uh, if, if I just do, just try to see the nodes that I have. Uh, so let's just run this. Okay, I have an interesting character at the start. So let's. Okay, so if I actually see, this is the node I have, and this is actually running Wasm Wasi. Okay, great. So now that I have that, uh, what I'll try to do is just see all the nodes I have. And you'll again see over the, the node naming and how it is named. So I have three agent pools uh, and I have a my wasi pool as well. Uh, the my wasi pool, as you guessed, uh, runs wasi. Okay, so uh, that, that's the setup we have until now. And what I will do next up is, like we talked about, we first want to make a runtime class for our slide application. That's what we'll be doing. And this code is actually are the same the one same as the one we were talking about so this is uh, a runtime class for a uh, slide we also have one for spin because you can essentially do it the same way uh, this demo if you want to use spin instead uh, it's just drag and uh, it's just drop and replace that's all you need to do so this uh, creates these two runtime classes 
to Kubernetes runtime classes. So let's go ahead and apply this. Uh, so this is with that I should have yes I have created two runtime classes. Next up, what I want to do is actually deploy my application. So here I have the deployment and um, uh, this is also pretty similar. I'm just telling it what container it needs to run. And this is the uh, testing container we had built out with uh, Wasm. Uh, they have it hosted. So that's what I'll be using. And um, I, 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 I'll also tell it that the runtime class it needs to use is uh, Wasm time slide. So Wasm time is the name of the, uh, is the name of the uh, Wasm runtime. Uh, Wasm runtime uh, uh, and uh, Wasm time is the one we'll be using. You can of course use others like Wasm edge uh, and more, uh, but right now Azure supports Wasm time very well. So we'll try using Wasm time. Uh, what I hadn't shown in the slides was this uh, load balancer and of course you'll need a load balancer over here. So I'll also uh, deploy this load balancer. So let's go. Yeah, so just for uh, keeping the time sake, but I hope that with this demo, you could uh, see that uh, what we did was that in the demo, we took uh, four different node pools. The first three were your standard uh, Docker uh, containers. And the last one that we deployed, and you can see the YAML structure. And I'll also share uh, the link if you want to see the default YAML structure uh, for uh, the deployment uh, uh, YAML that has been created to deploy our uh, node uh, node specifically for our WASI uh, node. Um, and the other demo that I wanted to quickly showcase is with KWASM. So what KWASM is that it's a Kubernetes operator that allows you to directly run your WebAssembly workloads on uh, Kubernetes. Now, one great thing is that it comes out of the box with multiple different types of ways in which you can run Kubernetes. So whether it's Minikube or it's micro kits, right? It has a really great support for uh, multiple uh, Kubernetes distributions and also uh, with multiple WebAssembly runtimes. And um, in case you want to get started with this, uh, you can install KWASM by using Helm. So if you have Helm, you can install Helm and install KWASM and the KWASM operator. And then just uh, run this kubectl command uh, uh, in uh, order to install uh, the uh, WebAssembly example. And over here, I've already done that. Uh, so this is my terminal and this is what I'm going to be doing. So over here, I'll just clear this out and I'll run this. So I'll apply this over here. And then what I'll do is I will uh, go ahead and test out this particular job. So uh, what we are doing over here is that um, we ran a sample WebAssembly job and you can see the result over here. And if I take a look at all of my uh, nodes that I have, so let me go ahead and do that. Uh, let me bring up all my nodes. So you can see that uh, all my pods uh, over here, there is one that is Wasm test. So this is running and this runs successfully. And of course my KWASM operator is also running perfectly fine. And uh, just to kind of summarize what we have covered. So of course there's a two way relationship. Why Kubernetes needs Wasm is because of the fact that Wasm has tiny containers. It has a much faster startup time. And of course uh, it is platform independent and why Wasm needs Kubernetes because of course we know that Kubernetes today has a golden standard in terms of how you can scale up applications with the help of Kubernetes. So the main idea for today's presentation was to showcase that, um, that balance and how you can run your WebAssembly workloads inside of Kubernetes and especially if you're having more highly computational tasks such as machine learning or even outside of machine learning, you can run them very easily on WebAssembly because of the small size and uh, the faster processing. And then of course manage those workloads on the help of or on the top of Kubernetes. And of course, uh, please take a look at the slides and the code snippet that we covered in today's demo. Uh, this might be useful. And yeah, with that, uh, thank you so much. And you can connect with us on our Twitter uh, in case uh, you have any questions. And of course, I'll be here to answer any of your questions. Thank you.